the work that I started doing in animal studies and, and later in posthumanism um, really was the result not of uh, an intellectual training and strategy so much as it was originally a kind of an unsponsored um, hold your nose and jump in kind of ethical commitment. Posthumanism, in my view, is, is not a rejection of humanism, and it's not a transcendence of humanism, and it's not the much cooler, smarter thing that comes after humanism. Yeah. What it's actually about is it's, it's, it's linked um, it's linked very integrally to, to humanism because the way that I describe it in, in the book is, uh, is what I'm trying to do is to take the, the um, desires and imperatives of humanism, many of which are admirable. Uh, so let's take, with the, with the question of animals, let's take the example of um, saying, well, you know, uh, treating animals cruelly is probably a bad thing to do. And that's something that a broad spectrum of people at this point, um, at least in you know, the cultures where we spend our time, would probably agree, agree about. So what I'm trying to do with posthumanism is to say, look, I agree with and I admire imperatives like that that are integral to humanism. But the problem is the theoretical and philosophical frameworks that humanism uses to try to make good on those commitments is actually self-defeating and actually ends up cutting the legs out from under the very thing that one wants to try to promote. The problem with rights discourse and with animal rights as it's, as it's traditionally framed is that when you start saying, well, why should we treat animals well? And why should animals be rights holding subjects? It's because, lo and behold, at the end of the day, they actually end up being just sort of retarded or diminished versions of us because all the re morally relevant capacities that would give animal standings standing are ones that we tend to possess in ways that are pretty identifiably human and then those just get transposed onto animals, right? Uh, and, so, and so you end up reinstating a very kind of normative, traditionally normative view of the human even as what you're trying to do is move away from that and expand the sphere of moral consideration. So the reason you need a post-humanist rather than humanist framework that you find in the rights discourse is to say, look, the reason we should care about animals and treat animals well and expand the moral community is not because all of these different creatures in the world are like us. What, what's beautiful and worthy of respect is that they're not like us. You know, there are different ways of being in the world that, that just like our way of being in the world, deserve to be protected, you know, from exploitation, protected from cruelty, allowed to flourish, and so on and so forth.